Hey everyone, it's Jim and Charles from Valves and More, an online vintage tube store. And today in tube lab number 170, we're going to talk about adjusting your gain with tube selection. But first, caution everyone, electronics and tube amplifiers can have very high voltages present, which can be lethal. Exercise extreme caution when working around them. Always consult a professional technician when in doubt. Okay, what in the heck am I talking about? Don't you just turn a knob to change the volume? Yes, you do. But what happens when you're running a turntable cartridge that's a wee bit low on output? And your phono preamp uses a 6SL7 or a 12AX7 too. Well, you may just be able to find a higher testing or higher spec variation that solves this by creating more gain at, well, the gain, gain stage. stage. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for the, that whole paragraph to say that. Anyways, well, Charles has a, a bunch of tubes lined up as examples. What have you got for us, Charles? All right. So one of the interesting things you have to remember about many of these different tube types is that they were made over a very long period of time and many of them changed construction and many of their parameters even changed, even though they technically didn't have an updated spec sheet for them. So let's start from the right over here and let's take a quick look, first of all, at a one of our rebase tubes. So this used to be a 7F7 tube and actually you can still see the etched logo on the top if I can get it there. It's always fun trying to film text on something that's reflective. And that's the most common 7F7 uh, that was made. It's the later version and they sound... Oh, they sound fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're a rock solid tube. They have the classic Sylvania sound. And these test a little bit higher than average. On our testers, 80 is roughly new old stock, but anywhere in the 75 to 80 range is usually in that area and these test consistently on the higher end of that. So this is a good example of a new old stock testing 6SL7. Now that 80 number, 8380, that's our, our that's our GM percentage out of 100, right? Right, right. That's not a uh, micromos number like you get on some testers. This is a percentage based number from our BNK testers that we've mod modified specifically to be able to test these tubes correctly. Yeah, so instead of being 100 out of 100, it's 80 out of 80. 80 out of 80. Yeah. And here we have another 6SL7 tube, and this one with a very different plate construction. And this was even later than these late Sylvanias. These were made by Sylvania underneath the, the Philips company brand, I guess you could say. Well, they started building them before Philips bought them. Mm -hmm. But uh, Philips, of course, wanted Sylvania for military contracts, and these are... These are military tubes. They are JAN, Joint Army Navy, and they're WGTs. They're built for any spec you can imagine. High Gs, high altitude, Yep. you know, whatever, dropping 20,000 feet in three seconds. Oh, they're very reliable. They're consistent testing tubes, and these were tested at the same point as this. And look at the difference in the testing numbers. We have a full 30 points over this guy here, and these are supposed to be the same tube spec wise. So if you needed a higher gain 6SL7, well, these are a great option for them. And we were running those in our popular um, universal kit phono preamp, mm -hmm. and they sound really good. Oh, they're very low noise, and did they ever bump up the gain on it? Yep. Yeah. You could, I mean, it's, you can hear. A lot of electrical specifications are linear. Now, dB is not. <laughs> dB is... Is a logarithmic scale. Yeah. Uh, is it every 3 dB increase doubles the volume? Something like that. Yeah. Anyways, I can never remember. I mean, we have to, we have to work with... When we're doing uh, analysis on things like the kit phono preamp, and we're looking at DB relationships to voltages. I, I, I develop a spreadsheet. <laughs> yeah, and, it's hard to keep it all in your head. <laughs> yeah, and then we can start comparing out. DB is great because it, it allows you to, to actually uh, compare apples to apples when mm -hmm. it comes to um, output. Anyways, we're on the wrong topic, aren't we? Yeah, so, so let's switch over to the lower gain cousin of the 6SL7, the 6SN7. And here we have an absolutely beautiful example of a Sylvania GTA. This is a new old stock chrome, tone, chrome dome angle plate that is testing right at new old stock, 99.99. So that's 99 out of 100% on our tester, which is right where it should be. 
And we got really lucky and we found a whole bunch of these. Yep. Yeah, we have a whole bunch of them in the store. Probably more of these GTA angle plates than we've ever had before, which is amazing that we've been able to find them. But say you uh, had an amplifier and you need a little bit less gain out of a 6SN7. Probably not the most common thing in the world. Well, Tungsol GTBs all tend to test a little bit lower, even as new old stock. You'll often see them testing in the 80s range out of 100. Pretty much on average 10% below a standard 6SN7. And this is a premium tube. I mean, the company itself is is named after the I think the filament uh -huh. yep. uh, tungsten, uh, tungsten that they started using years ago. Sol stands for sun. So uh, tungsten filament that glows like the sun is basically Tungsol. <laughs> yeah, and Tungsol built amazing tubes. Unfortunately, they just didn't have the volume of Sylvania and GE and mm -hmm. Mullard. And so there aren't that many of them around. And as a result, of course, these big tall boys are fairly expensive and they're hard to find. Yep. And they're a bit of a lower gain, but we have another option and we're big fans of these guys. This is a 6GU7, which is a nine pin, almost equivalent of a 6SN7. The technical equivalent is the 6CG7 tube and it is identical to the 6SN7 GTB, except for the base and the bottle and, you know, the overall construction of it. But we should have brought is. adapters out on the screen, but we, ha <laughs> we have excellent nine pin adapters that bring you over to the octal pinout. Mm -hmm. So you actually, can, I'll go get one while you're on screen. Yeah. So, so you can, using one of those adapters, use a 6GU7 or a 6CG7 in a 6SN7 spot. And there's one of them right there. There you go. So that converts a nine pin over to an octal. So it'll fit in a spot like these tubes. And we really like the 6GU7s. They are low noise. Um, they test very consistently. Um, they're not microphonic at all. They and have a very open, clean, clear sound. It's almost like what the CD should have sounded like if the CD master <laughs> mastering engineers would get their shit together and, and make decent sounding digital yeah. um, uh, music for us. And they sound different from just about every 6SN7 out there, but in a good way. They have their own unique sound. And you can see that many of them test consistently a bit lower, like the tongue saw, which isn't that surprising because these had a nominal gain of 17 compared to the 20 of a standard 6SN7. So it's normal for them to test a bit lower. So those are a couple of examples of 6SN7s that you can get a bit lower gain on. Now, what? most people who have tube phono preamps aren't running the 6SL7, no, which not. is a shame because the 6SL7 is a much, much better sounding tube. It's, it's a bit lower gain than a 12AX7, but it is, oh, it's it's warm, it has that tube sound to it, it's not, um, I don't know, it's sterile not, the right word? <laughs> yeah, it's not, it, it has a very live sound to yeah. it. So, now, uh, even though it's got a lower gain, um, it, it just makes it into the requirements of a phono tube, right? Uh, we, we managed to get, I think, just a, just a, smidgen under one volt RMS as a, as our regular output on the, on yeah. the kit, yeah. which so, is fine. And you know, that's, that's all you really need. But if you wanted to pop something like this in there, you'll get a bit more output, which is great. But, so what do we got for 12 x sevens though? Cause that's going to be, uh, most people are running these if they've got tube phones. Now, before we get to the 12 x seven though, what about the nine pin equivalent of a six SL seven? We've got a 12 AT seven here. And these came a little bit later. They're lower gain than a 12AX7. I believe they have a gain of 70 compared to 100, which is the same as a 6SL7. And something was going on with Sylvania late in their production years where many of their tubes, their tube designs, were testing much higher. And this is a great example of that. We've got a 12AT7WC, another military tube, Jan, Joint Army Navy. And you can see on this one here, we've got 98 out of 100, but we've marked H's on it. And when we do that, we know that we have to switch to our high operating point on our tester. We change the sensitivity of it. Because if we didn't, we'd peg the meter. That's how high these things test. And they should be coming in at 70, right? They should or be no. coming in. Sorry, they should be coming at a, uh, in at 100 or 100 yeah. on the regular setting. Exactly. Right. So... Can you we, tell Charles does most of the testing <laughs> these days? <laughs> so we actually have to adjust down to even be able to get a proper testing number on these guys. So they test actually quite a bit 
more like a 12AX7 than a 12AT7. So if you happen to have a, a phono preamp or a high gain preamp that uses these guys, this is a great way to increase your gain. Now we're going to look at the 12AX7s and we have two different examples here. We have one that's testing a little bit lower than, than normal. And well, we have, no, it's within the new old stock range. Yeah, yeah, it's not 100. And then we have one that's testing quite a bit over that. And the one that's a little bit lower is one of these beautiful RFT Newhouse ECC83s. And we were lucky enough to find some of these not that long ago that tested absolutely beautifully. Yeah, we had a lot of them from and our Eastern uh, European supplier, and they most are, of them are gone. They're almost gone. <laughs> Uh, they're hard, he has a hard time finding them. Mm -hmm. I, if he finds them, I'll get an email from him and say, Jim, would you like a whole bunch more? I have some close match pairs. And uh, then our bank account empties. <laughs> he's happy. And eventually, he's a great guy, though. He packs well. If we have a problem, he deals with it immediately. We've got suppliers that start arguing about 20 bucks. And, mm. yeah, we don't deal with those guys. No. And... This is one of the things that I really like about RFT tube factories is that they all had their own unique logos to them. And many of them were stylized in the form of a tube. So we have the the new house N. I didn't know with that. With pins coming out the bottom. So it's shaped ah, like a vacuum tube. Right. So the one that looks like a RAM that I think is actually a, a movie theater set of reels or a projector. It's it probably, probably is. Or a reel-to-reel -reel, uh, tape deck. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a good idea, too. <laughs> And uh, an example of a high gain 12AX7, we're back to the Sylvanias. This is a Sylvania gray box plate, and it's branded for Baldwin, but so of course it's, a, it's in the standard Sylvania green font here. So it's an organ tube, which organ usually tube. means um, uh, selected off the line. Mm -hmm. And look at those testing numbers. Look kind of familiar? It's testing way up there, just like these later 6SL7s and these later 12AT7s. Uh, I mean, way over. roughly 20%, like 15 yeah. to 20% over yeah. normal. Yeah. So this is also useful in situations such as a guitar amp. Many guitar amps use 12AX7s and 12AT7s as their first gain stages. And if you have pickups that have a bit of a lower output, this could really help increase that. It also could change the sound because the... The Almost good, certainly, yeah. Because the, the amp might break up a little sooner, mm -hmm. so it might be a good thing, it might be a and bad thing. tone controls sometimes lose a lot of gain depending on how they're doing things, so this might help keep some of the output. Right. Okay. So that's interesting. So a lot of late production Sylvanias basically went off spec. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's a, a lot of variety just across all the generations of tubes that were made and all the different factories that made them. You'll see them all over the place. So if you're looking for a bit more or a bit less gain out of something, then... Uh, you just you drop know, us a note and Charles will go find it yeah, for you. Yeah, <laughs> do some research out there. And uh, one thing I will note too is you might think, why would I want less gain out of something? Well, with less gain, you tend to also get less noise. And uh, especially with these 6GU7s in particular, they have incredibly, incredibly low noise floors, which we really love about them. Yeah, and a lot of amps, uh, preamplifier stages in a lot of systems, They've got plenty of gain. You you actually don't need to worry about, you know, turning down the uh, the the tube a little bit because you'll get a better noise floor and you'll still have lots of gain available in in the preamp. You actually a good way to know if your your preamp section and if, a lot of these are first section tubes, right? Mm -hmm. um, a good way to know if you've got plenty of gain in your tube amp is where did you set the volume. If you're normally listening at, let's say, three-quarter volume, well, you're not going to want to turn down your tube gain at all. In fact, you could actually use some tube gain. But if you can't get the volume knob past a quarter without going deaf, well, you could easily go to a, a, a lower gain too. And maybe get some less noise out of that too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, thanks for doing that, Charles. That was a great idea. Yeah, I'm going to clear the deck here, and maybe we can take a look at what came in. Okay, so through the magic of editing, we'll be coming back to you in just a minute. Okay, well, we have weeks and weeks in which we don't get a lot of really great new stock in. We get bits and pieces of things that are interesting. Well, last week, we got two 
<laughs> huge boxes. <laughs> I think we spent the whole day unpacking. <laughs> yeah. Well, luckily our shipper um, is, does an amazing job. Um, anyways, uh, Charles, uh, these are all tubes that you basically found. So why don't you start with the smallest and probably actually the, the most interesting of all the tubes because mm -hmm. it's a very high demand tube. Uh huh. And we did get a few of these in before and we managed to find some more of them. We have a great Sylvania 6922, which of course is a 6DJ8 type, which is a 9-pin medium mu dual triout. Now we've got a lot of these in and we recently had a discussion as to whether or not we should offer a discount and I think we will. So they'll be on sale in the store uh, for a limited time only. So if you're looking for an excellent 6922 that's reasonably affordable, these, I mean, these are new old stock Sylvania mil-spec tubes. I think they're mil-spec, aren't yep. they? Yep, they are. these are all Jan tubes. Yeah. Um, drop into the store while the sale, it's just going to be one of those quick little sales that'll run for a week. So if you're watching this video two years from now, <laughs> you missed the boat, but we might actually still have some left. <laughs> I don't know if we have that many, but anyways, that was a nice find, Charles. What else have you got? Uh, another Sylvania tube. You know, we love our Sylvania tubes and we love it even more whenever they are mil spec ones. We've been finding a lot of these Jan tubes lately. And here is a 6080 WC, which of course is one of the last versions of the 6080 ever made. This is a mil spec version. We've got triple micas on it. So what does that mean if it's the latest and highest spec? D does that mean it's, it's like for a nuclear blast or? Well, you never know. I mean, some of the Russian tubes specifically say on their data sheets that they were designed to survive a nuclear EMP pulse. <laughs> oh, yeah, they do, don't they? <laughs> so you never know what these guys... They're, those are about the most solid 6080s I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. that, that was a nice find. And I think we have a few of them. Yeah, we have a few of them. We have some that are Sylvania branded, some that are RCA branded, and some that are GE branded, I believe. But they're all Sylvanias, right? They are all Sylvanias. Yeah. And the only difference between the different versions is this copper support post is silver on some of them, but they're all Sylvania tubes. And um, just like uh, everything else, these have been testing great. They've been testing high. Of course, the 6080 is a current pusher. Sorry, I'm kind of out of focus there. And, and these have been testing very high current, right okay. where they should be. We should keep moving or people <laughs> are going to fall asleep. Okay, another 6080. We have, we found some more Toshibas from the same guys last time and managed to get some more in. We've sold a few of these. Very hard tube to find over here in North America. And um, they are just great looking, great testing 6080 tubes. Okay, I'm going to move on along quick. I'm getting the wave over here. There is a rebranded Svetlana, and this one is a, a real Svetlana. A real Svetlana. You can always Petersburg. tell by these tines going downwards here. And these are one of our favorite EL34s. We get them in whenever we can. So uh, this one actually hasn't been tested yet, but and it, they're they're really commonly branded for Marshall. I think they had a, con a long term multi year contract with Marshall in which they just kept on supplying Marshall amps. When mm -hmm. Marshall amps left the factory. They left with the best DL34 they could find at yep. the time. And these are still fantastic now. And one of our other favorites, we have an RFT branded as a Telefunken. And just look at how nice that label is on there. This is a new old stock one. And they are just great EL34s. I mean, other than the Mullard XF2, the RFT EL34 and the Svetlana EL34 are two of our favorites. Those are our top three, and there's really nothing in number four, right? Nope, nope. And take a look at the beautiful box set that came in. I mean, how often do you see Telefunken boxes that look this great? Yeah, and that's a good indication of the quality of the tube. Um, sometimes, the box is actually often the boxes arrive pretty beat up and yeah we're sort of praying that the tubes in good shape <laughs> and usually the tubes are fine but it's a great indication that this was stored indoors in a dry location yep it was cared for cared for and that's all we ask well if you stayed this long here's some discount codes to help you out there is a secret code that you could easily figure out and people have been grabbing it. So that's excellent. I really like to see customers and viewers grab these discounts. And we can get to almost everybody in the world with flat rate $20 shipping. And if your order's $150 or more after discount, the shipping's on us, folks. Stay safe, everyone. This is Jim. And Charles. Signing off. 
Cheers, everyone.